28 divided by 7 equals 13. Is this a true notion? At this moment, at this place, we will prove this to you. So let's first use division. 7 goes into 8 once, which makes remaining 21, and 7 goes into 21 three times, which results into 13. And in case you're still unconvinced, let's use multiplication. 7 times 3 is 21, and 7 times 1 is 7. When you add them up, it's 28. So, sure? Then let's use addition as well. Adding 7 threes results into 21. And if you add up all these ones, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28, it becomes 28 again. This was a comedy done by Abbott and Costello a while ago. But it's real, right? But this comedy arose one question in our mind. Why do we need to add, subtract, divide, or multiply in a certain way? Were we ever told why we need to do that in a certain way, or were we just forced to memorize? While the other subject seems to be have a clear application, or even is based on the real work, math itself at first glance seems to be it is just a bunch of numbers and letters, and the application of it is still unclear. And how we learn and approach math makes math a boring and laborious subject, while it is not. I love math. More specifically, I love solving the math problem. I love it because math itself is so infinite, even though I learn and learn, there are still a bunch of things left to learn. And a lot of people do not understand me like you guys, but this characteristic of math attracted me. I hated math. You guys might have expected me to say I love math since I'm on the stage talking about math, but that's not how it goes. Until grade 10, which is last year, I never studied math by myself, unless someone forced me to do. Obviously, we two are at the opposite end of the line in terms of the starting point. When I was grade 7, I faced a challenge that I thought I couldn't overcome. I was in St. Paul International School in Hanoi, and my math teacher forced me to join the math Olympiad. But the problem was that my English skill was at the elementary level. So I was very frustrated. I mean, how can I solve a problem when I cannot understand those? However, when I received the questions and looked at it really carefully, I was able to solve or at least deduce what the problems are asking for. I felt like math diminishes the boundary that language makes. For example, unless you speak the specific languages, you cannot understand what these words mean. But writing FX, it makes it understandable for all cultural people. While language is very specific to one culture, math is really universal. Coming back to my story, to overcome the fear of math, I have met several tutors since I was in middle school. But all these tutors had different approach. One simply told me to solve a bunch of problems and memorize everything from answers to method. One tutor told me to brainwash myself that math is simple and easy. But any approaches were still in the box of problem solving, but nothing else. Then I met a one tutor who have at least made me interested in math. He told me all these random stories related to math in between the class, even though it wasn't related to the math concept that he was teaching at that point. One day he asked me, why is tripod a tripod? He looked at the table and said, table has four legs. Isn't having more legs more stable? Of course I didn't know the answer at that point. Then he told me that three points create single plane wherever it is placed. So it is stable wherever it is placed. This is a very basic mathematical concept, but it is applied in a very ordinary object, which we are even using it right now to film ourselves. However, even though knowing that math is everywhere, this still didn't motivate me to learn because the fact that math is hard didn't change. So I've attended a math seminar recently, and this experience has changed my perception completely. And being a participant in the seminar where we two met, we were asked to investigate something about the math and present it at the end of the day. 
still interested in the linguistical aspect of the math, I persuaded her and decided to focus on comparing and contrasting math and language. The combination of words creates a phrases, and the combination of phrases creates a sentence, and the combination of sentences creates a paragraph. Within this procedure, the rule of grammar and syntax should be obeyed to create a logical paragraph. In math, when numbers and variables which functions as words meets a mathematical symbol, it creates an equation or sentence. Then when equations meet equations, it creates a an, an logical explanation which can be considered as paragraphs. This analogy might be a bit confusing, but let's look at these two equations for example. So these two equations uses x, y, and numbers and connect it with plus, minus, and equal signs to create a one phrases or maybe a sentence. Then we can combine these two equations to create a one sentence like this, and like using equal sign as a conjunction. Then this sentence can be reduced into more simpler version, y equal x powered plus 4x plus 12. In this process, as we mentioned before, there are a few rules to keep in order to make a sentence logical. And this is the same in language. If we connect two irrelevant sentences, then it creates one illogical sentence. This was applied in math as well. This is why the first example have felt awkward. As a language, it did not obey the rules that it should, and it was conveying something wrong and inaccurate. Thinking it this way, it makes it more understandable why we need to learn these rules when you learn the language. So we simply consider it as a rules. Language is very abstract. Depending on the context which the world is used, the meaning can vary. For example, asking your girlfriend or boyfriend to watch a movie obviously implies a date, while asking your friend literally means to watch a movie. And surprisingly, in math, this works as well. If you look at these two equations, these two equations basically share the same form. However, depending on the context, it variable varies. One is simply used in the context of triangle, and the one is simply used in the context of circle. Within the mathematical discipline, there are a lot of equations which share a similar form or even the same form, but uses different variables depending on the context it is placed. And this again shares the characteristic of the language. And while this is true, the definition of plus, minus, and other, other mathematical expressions have a fixed definition which makes math less abstract compared to language. In this sense, math is just another form of language which overcomes the limitation that language originally had. First, realizing that mixing math and language, which is considered to be totally different uh, discipline, was possible. I realized that this was innate beauty, intrinsic value that mathematics had. Then what does it really mean for math to be a language? It means that we can communicate through math in a various form, reading, listening, and writing. Second, it means that we can minimize the error and communicate more precisely. Last but not least, math can be taught as more humane manner like, like language, which will increase students' interest in math. Understanding that math is just similar to language, this made me more approachable, this made me more approachable to math. When we learn language, especially when I learned, first learned Chinese, I first started learning the accents and then a simple characteristics, then how to say, hi, my name is. And like step by step, if this knowledge just accumulates, then we, then after we can use write or read in a more, more fluent manner. And this also applies in math. Taking a more humane approach to learn math makes the math more lead to a better understanding of the context of math, which, like me, who takes math HL course right now, can get a seven in the math HL course. And after understanding how math was more simple and not hard as I thought, the stories that my tutors told me became more touchable. Like Hidid, I was able to look around with the world with mathematical lens on. And if you have this mathematical lens on, it makes the world so fascinating that you might just sit around for an hour without realizing that, that, that the time is passing by. 
even when I go watch a movie. When I, when I was deciding a sit where I should be sitting, I thought of a question. Is it possible to create an equation where we can find the best seat for a person depending on their height, eyesight, or any other factors? And like this, math itself allows us to see in a world in completely new perspective. And this is only possible through math. And I thought this was the intrinsic beauty that the math had. Like her, I think there are a lot of people who fear the math and believe that they're bad at math. But this is not true. Everyone has the capability to become a mathematician and have a way is to understand the intrinsic value of the math. Remember that it is you neglecting math, not math neglecting you. Through this talk, I wish everyone understood the intrinsic value of the math. Math is not just solving a problem, but with a discipline uh, discipline with the intrinsic value. Even though this might be touching you right away, but if it at least changes your perception of the math, then it will be fine too. And who knows that math will bring you a relationship like us, a girlfriend or boyfriend, if you learn math. Thank you for listening to our speech and wish this at least changed your perception of math a bit. Thank you. Thank you.